Welcome, welcome, welcome to story time with me, Miss Sheila. Today, I hope you're having a wonderful and beautiful day. I almost forgot to say it, but I remember. I hope you're having a grand day and a wonderful Christmas. So today, I'm reading the 12 days of Christmas, and it's the story behind that favorite Christmas song. Oh, so let's get into it. So it says, the 12 days of Christmas. Many years ago, people wanted a day on which to celebrate Jesus' birthday. Finally, 350 years after Jesus was born, December 25th was selected as Christ Mass, the day for his birthday party. The 12th day after Christmas, January 6th, was selected as the day to honor the um, to honor the visit of the wise men to Jesus. And this day was called Epiphany. In 567 AD, the 12 days between Christmas and Epiphany were filled with festivals, ending with a party on the 12th night. So let's look at a song about the 12 gifts given on each of those 12 days of Christmas. So, so many of us thought that the 12 days of Christmas meant before Christmas, but it's actually after the birth of Jesus. So cool. So let's start. No one really knows when or why the song, The 12 Days of Christmas, was written. The legend is that during the 16th century, the officials of the Church of England forbade all other religious teachings about Christ except theirs. So the next 200 years, parents who refused to join this church used the song to teach their children in secret. So let's discover the 12 Christian meanings hidden in the gifts of this song. But first of all, let's find out who gives the gift. The song calls the giver, my true love. Hmm. Who could that person be? Who loves you and gives you many things each day? Well, the only one who does all, that is God. He's our true love. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. What is the first and best gift in this song? So it's the first and the best gift. Do you know what a partridge is? It's a small bird that looks like a little brown chicken. And this brave chicken, um, this brave bird is willing to give its life to defend its babies from harm. Why do the partridge remind you of? Or no, who does the partridge remind you of? Think of the one person who willingly gave his life for you, Jesus. And remember what a, what a cross was made from? A tree. So let the partridge in a pear tree remind you of Jesus the best Christmas gift of all, and who died on the cross, who died for us on the cross. And we read that verse, like of, of Jesus died on the cross on John 3, 16. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves. The turtle doves are known as gentle birds of peace. Long ago, people gave doves to God as a gift of love. Jewish fathers and mothers gave two doves to God when they brought a newborn baby to the temple in Jerusalem. And guess what Mary and Joseph gave to God when they took Jesus to the temple when he was a baby? You're right. Two doves. So let the gift of two doves remind you of the two doves given to God when baby Jesus was first brought to the temple. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Three French hens. Long ago, French hens cost a lot of money um, and more than ordinary chickens. Only wealthy people could buy them. What could three expensive birds remind you of? Can you think of a, a time in the Bible about three important gifts meant for a king? Remember what gifts were given to baby Jesus? The wise men gave him three expensive gifts. Gold, incense and myrrh. Gold is the most valuable gift of all. 
Incense comes from the tree bark and is burned during times of prayer. Myrrh is a thick reddish gum used as a perfume. So let the three French hen, hens remind you of the three costly gifts given to Jesus by the wise men. And the fourth day is of, of Christmas, my true love gave to me, is four calling birds. God created all kinds of birds, each with a special song. Have you heard sparrows chirp or pigeons coo? Have you heard blackbirds shout, ka, ka, ka? Have you heard four men named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John who wrote about Jesus? Each of them had their own story to tell. They were like calling birds because the books they wrote called people to believe in Jesus. So let the four calling birds remind you of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the four special books they wrote. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings. Gold rings are some of the most treasured of all gifts. And do you know someone who wears a gold ring? Jewish people consider the first five books of the Old Testament, the Torah, or the law, God's directions, to be five great treasures worth more than gold. Can you name these five books? They tell many stories of God, Adam, Eve, Noah, Joseph, and Moses. So let the five golden rings remind you of the five valuable books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The six geese are laying. Do you know what people in China used to hand out when a baby was born? They gave an egg of each to each of their friends. Why do you think they gave an egg? Because remember what's inside of each egg? It's a new life, a baby chick. And what does the Bible tell us about six days of new life? The first two chapters of the book of Genesis tells us how God made plants, birds, fish, animals, a man, and a woman. So let the six geese laying eggs remind you of the new life God made in the first six days of creation. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven swans of swimming. Have you ever seen a baby swan? When it first hatches, the swan is black and it looks like an ugly duckling. As it grows and changes, it becomes beautiful and its neck stretches out and its feathers turn snowy white. How do you grow as God's child? The Holy Spirit changes you on the inside, in your heart and in your mind. The Holy Spirit gives seven special gifts to God's children and these gifts help us to grow and to serve others. So let the seven swimming swans remind you of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit and you find those gifts in Romans chapter 12 verses 6 to 8. Go look that up and you'll find out what the gifts are. On the eighth day of Christmas my true love gave to me eight maids of milking. What food do all babies need in order to grow? Milk. Of course milk helps your bones grow strong and healthy like God wants you to be. Do you know how reading God's word in the Bible is like drinking milk? God's word helps you grow in your head, in your heart, and mind and spirit. Jesus taught his followers eight special sayings called the Beatitudes to help them grow strong in their faith. So let the eight maids of milking remind you of the, the eight Beatitudes. And you find that in Matthew 5 verses 3 to 10. Nine ladies dancing. Are you a happy person? I am. Do you ever dance when you feel joyful? Do you know people who need more joy in their lives? Or more love or peace or patience? How does a person get all these things? God's Holy Spirit is our helper. He makes love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control grow inside of us. Those are good reasons to dance for joy. So let the nine ladies dancing remind you of the nine qualities 
that God's Holy Spirit produces in our life. And you find that in Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23. On the tenth day of Christmas, our true love gave to me ten lords a leaping. Long ago, lords were important men whose commands had to be obeyed. People honored lords and obeyed their rules. Whose rules do you obey? Do you know the ten important rules God asks us to follow? The Ten Commandments, you're right, tells us what to do and what not to do. And they show us how to love God and other people. So let the ten leaping lords remind you of the tenth commandments, which we are to obey. So Exodus 20 verses 2 to 17 has the ten commandments. So you can go read them up for yourself. Eleven pipers piping. Years ago, a piper was a man who traveled through village playing happy tunes on his flute pipe. What do you think happened when children heard his music? They followed him all around town. Twelve disciples followed Jesus everywhere he went, but only eleven faithfully stayed with him. Judas double-crossed Jesus. Like pipers, the eleven disciples piped the song of God's love everywhere they went. And many people listened to their message and followed Jesus too. So let the 11 pipers piping help you remember to follow Jesus. So there's a book of the 12 disciples and it's in Mark chapter 3 verse 16 to 19. So you get to know who the disciples are. 12 drummers drumming was the last day of Christmas. What is a drummer's special job? A drummer must beat on a steady rhythm so everyone can march or play music together in unity. What would happen if the drummer stopped drumming? Christians belong to many different churches, but one thing gives them unity, their common beliefs. The Apostles' Creed lists 12 things Christians believe about God. This brings oneness and unity like a band marching to the drummer's beat. So let the 12 drummers drumming remind you of the Apostles' Creed, 12 important beliefs of Christians. And here it is. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and, and sits at the right hand of God the Father. He shall return to judge both the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Wow. I hope you really enjoy learning about what the 12 days of Christmas means in that song. And who our true love is, is God in heaven. Until, um, I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful Christmas. Until next time with me, Nichilla. Take care.